such record keeping? So if you can quickly find that in your book. Miss what page? Well, my book, because I have an older book. My book says page 16, but I think it's further along. It's called My Research Record Keeper. It starts off with today's date. It says has the author, date of publication. Okay, that's 16 in mine. Okay. How about you, Dean? You find it? No. Not yet? No, you know, I got, uh, I don't know. Um, Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. Mm -hmm. How about you, Elder Boyd? I haven't received my book yet. I'm okay. um, still okay. trying to get it. All right, we'll, we'll get that taken care of. Okay, with in gathering your materials, you need to keep a record of all of your materials. As Dr. Butler requested, you need to have a big binder, a three-ring binder, preferably one that's okay, got it. closed. And then that way you don't lose anything. It can't come out. And you want to have the dividers with the pockets. So if you're out someplace and you see something um, that you know can go into chapter one, then you put it in that folder for chapter one. If you see something for chapter two, it goes in that folder. But on this page, my research record keeper, you can put the date that you found the material who the author or authors are, the date of publication of the book or the article, the title of the source. You put the city of publication, who the publisher is, the title of the, if you're using a periodical, the volume number, the issue number, the date, the editor, if you're looking on the internet, they have a place for you to put the web address in there. Mm. Then a date for retrieval, the date that you retrieved it. If it's a book, you also want to put the ISBN number. And what this page, I would suggest you to make several copies of this page. So you can keep put every time you find something, fill out this page and put it in your book. Put it like you can put it in the back of your book in by chapter five. You can put it back there. Or if you have a pocket in the very back or a slot, you can put them back there. Because what you're going to do after you finish all the writing and you've got everything all done, you're going to create a reference section. And this is going to go in your reference section. Every piece of material that you have gathered, whether it's from the internet, it's a book, it's an article, whatever that you have used, you're going to take all of that you're going to put it in alphabetical order, and that is going to become your reference section. So when someone is reading your book and they see that, according to Dr. Butler, 2022, they can go to your reference and they can see all of the information about that. And they can go and get her book so they can read more and give them a little more insight. So it's a good tool to have. I'm glad that Dr. Butler put this in here because when I was doing my writing for uh, my thesis and dissertations, I used index cards. And then I just put them in alphabetical order and entered the information in and I had my reference page. But this has everything that you would need to fill out and complete to keep track of all of the research that you have done and that you've gathered. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, then let's move on to methodology. And methodology is simply what method that you're gonna to use 
to conduct your research. If you're going to do interviews, if you're going to do statistics, charts and graphs, if you're going to do um, just research, you're going to go and get books and do research. And in using the APA style that Long Beach Christian College uses, you're taking someone else's words and you're making their words say what you would like to say in your paper. So you think about how, you know, what you're going to write about and you think about what method that you would like to use. Some people like surveys and they create a survey with 10 questions on it and they create that survey, they take it, maybe they'll do it at church with the pastor's permission. Um, maybe they're going to do um, go to the mall and survey people or the grocery store, wherever it is that you decide you want to conduct this survey. We have also in the book, towards the back, we have a form if you're going to do interviews that your interviewee must complete because we must protect the school at all times. And you wanna protect yourself as a research scholar. And we will get to that later on. It's We've got a while to go before we get to that. So do does everyone understand methodology? Yeah. Okay, and what we're talking about here and how you're going to make your decision on what works best. And you could start off by saying, I want to do some statistics, but then you change your mind and maybe further on, you might want to do a survey or you might want to do an interview. This is constantly changing. This is a rough draft of what your, your paper is going to end up being. Yes. If, I, if you're interviewing somebody or you're talking to somebody about something, you know, you said you have, you have them to sign this form, right? Some people uh, talk to you and, 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 you know, tell you, say a lot of things, tell you a lot of things, but they might not want to, want to sign the form. Do you still use the information or not? You can get some good information, but the person don't want to sign any papers. Then you wouldn't use their information. Okay. That, that, that was, okay. yeah. Cause you, you want to, like I said, you want to always protect yourself you want to protect the school so if they you ask them some questions and then they you tell them well i have a form that i need you to complete so that i can interview you and they say well i don't want to be interviewed then you just thank them for their time and you just move on to the next person okay because you don't want them to come back later on and say you know you use my information and i told you i didn't want to do this this is this so is to always to protect yourself and to protect the school. Because some people are not comfortable in filling out paperwork and, and things of that nature. So right. yeah, that's why I asked that question. Right. Yeah. yeah. You got it. You got it. Okay, so now let's go down to our transition words that um, I sent out. And I gathered quite a bit of information so you can use this. And basically, uh, transitional words and phrases, they are like connectors. They bridge the gap with what you're, you're writing about, what you're saying. So there's on the screen, Dr. Butler has put up uh, the transitional words and phrases. And basically what it's showing there is one of your primary goals as a writer is to present ideas in a clear and understandable way. To help readers move through your complex ideas, you want to be intentional about how you structure your paper as a whole, as well as how you form the individual paragraphs that comprise it. In order to think through the challenges of presenting your ideas articulately, logically, and in ways that seem natural to your readers, check out some of these resources. 
Okay, so in these words, these are words that are going to bridge the gap, sort of carry your thoughts over. So in this particular listing here, this is transition words and phrases. So you have causation, chronology, combinations, contrast, example. Um, you might use these words. They could possibly, you know, work with you uh, here. Chron chronology, connecting what issues in regard to when they occur. So you're speaking and you're saying, you're, you're talking about this book, okay? And you're going through it and Dr. Butler says, you know, such and such and such about this particular topic. And afterwards, she stated, that for burnout, there are many causes. So let us examine what those causes might be. So you could put that word, it would fit there afterwards. So it's bridging the gap between what you're trying to, the point you're trying to get across. So like here in this lower left quadrant of the screen, um, I'm trying to get there. Okay, it says connecting a general idea to a particular instance of this idea. So as an illustration from a Latin abbreviation, for example, okay. For example, for instance, specifically that is, so Dr. Butler was speaking on burnout. For example, pastors are overworked, okay. That is an example of burn, why, what causes burnout, excuse me. Then you can say specifically when they are preaching for long periods of time, this can be a product of burnout. So you just use, you're picking and choosing these words. These words can help make your paper just pop, as she says. It gives more meat to your paper rather than saying, you know, something, oh, well, this is, this is what causes burnout, okay? That's kind of bland, but if you were to put in there one of the examples or for example, burnout is caused by pastors who preach long sermons. Another example would be the things that are going on now with COVID, as you stated before, Elder Moore, Okay, a lot of the churches have not reopened because of COVID. And, you know, that's causing burnout on the pastors. Right. So these words are just words to help you to make your paper more personable, more readable, and to get your point across right. as to what you're trying to sell. Mm -hmm. So you... You know, Dr. Butler says, you know, blah, 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 blah about this. And furthermore, she states, blah, 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 blah. She goes on to say, blah, 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 blah. So there's many words that are transitional words and transitional phrases that you can use in your paper. And, you know, we will work with you to, you know, help you along. That's why we're here. We're here to help you succeed in your goal to reach your goal of getting your degree and finishing this paper all right. okay and that's well all i had really the last one the common parenthetical expressions okay as it shows there after all at any rate mm -hmm. consequently there's that for example again for instance you know, generally speaking, speaking. Mm -hmm. burnout yeah. is a very prominent problem in today's churches, generally speaking. However, there are some cures to burnout. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are many cures to burnout. <clears throat> so you would just fit those words, those common expressions, parenthetical expressions into your paper. It just gives it that extra pizzazz.
was there one more? Any questions? That was it. No. Okay. Well, I thank you for allowing me to help. You know that Dr. Joyce is our faculty cohort. You'll be back for it's some more. That if you're working on your research paper and you need help, she has completed several research papers. And how many, how many uh, masters? I have two. Two masters. So each required a research paper. So if she knows how to do research, use her. Let the Lord lead you and use her. Anybody that can help you. Um, when, 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 I, when I first started teaching this years ago, I know that a lot of the pastors, their wives type their paper. Their secretary. So whoever you can use to help you, let them help you. You see them in the light. Mm -hmm. All right. And these words, mm -hmm. these words are simply words that make you sound academic, that make you sound like you know what you're talking about. When you are a minister, <laughs> when you're preaching, you're bringing a word, you can say, in closing. You know how you say in closing and then never close? But mm -hmm. in closing. Instead of saying in closing, you can say, finally, that's all that she's doing. She's giving you some other words to use instead of saying said. Pastor said, pastor said. You can say stated, found that. Instead of saying said, said, said. Mm -hmm. Those are words called transition. Okay? That's, that's all they are. Okay, any any questions for Dr. Joyce? You better get her number so that if you get stuck on something, you can call her and she'll be able to help you. Okay, the other thing is I have just talked to my technical person. <laughs> so make sure that you get those recordings. Those recordings are very in depth. They walk you through how to do your paper. Right now, the first thing that you should be working on, well, number one is your topic. What are you writing about? Your topic or your subject. Once you choose your topic and your subject, or you get your title, you can then write the introduction. The introduction is the first thing that you write. You're introducing the paper. And I've already discussed this in the recording that I sent to you. And so we're going to try and get that to you because I want you to see how that introduction um, should happen. Any, can anyone tell me how that introduction, how you're going to write that introduction? How did you write it, Elder Moore? Uh, to your paper. We're only looking for how many pages? Ten pages. Pages. Ten to fifteen. If you can get fifteen, you're good. Ten to fifteen pages, and all we're doing is following the outline for the proposal. The outline for the proposal. I wish I could bring that up, but I don't think I can. Uh, give, give me a minute. How are you going to do that? Elmore, you talk while I try to find this. How did you do your introduction? How did you open up? Uh, I, 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 I think I would open up by saying that, you know, talking about Bringing in back to uh, many pastors uh, uh, and ministers, uh, those that in, in the ministry that have left the poor, have left the poor period of they calling or whatever. Outline your paper. So the mm -hmm. first thing I'm looking for in your paper is the introduction. 
the introduction, of course, um, Go ahead. had a rough draft. So, so I, more I of all of that and that uh, you can have I mean, all of that's in the recording. Hold on a minute. Let me just go to see if I can do this. Hold on a minute. I, I have it. I was able to pull it up. Let's see if we can, we can uh, go. Well, let's and, and try it again. Okay. Oh, hold on a minute. This is your book. That's what she was talking about. That's the record keeper she was telling mm -hmm. you. Instead of using a little index card to keep record of your stuff, all the books that you're using, use this form. If right. you're good at the computer and you somehow can keep it on, in a folder on the computer, good for you. But if you can't, duplicate this form. Okay? I'm trying to talk to y'all. That's why I had uh, Dr. Joyce Tonight, I thought she was going to do a little bit more because um, y'all know I, I'm, I'm getting uh, cheats at the bottom, right? All righty. Yeah, you tell so us. Here's that form. Uh, I don't know. It's on page 18, 16, their, their form. When you when you fill out this form, you got everything you need. Let me yeah. get a proposal. Okay. Um, proposal. This is what you're asked to do a proposal, 10 to 15 pages. If this proposal has an outline, this is the outline. I have it starting on page um, 29. I don't know what page it is in your book, but it's the element. The first element is the introduction, statement of the problem, purpose of the study, Research design, methodology, research questions. I want Elamore to see what we did with that paper, Elamore, what I did. I took that uh, picture of yours and I outlined it. That's why it's important that you get that Zoom recording. Okay? Okay, the Let one that's a key you. element, that's the one you're talking about. Christina's going to check it out for us, yeah. okay? All righty. Uh, let, me, let me go to the proposal. Give me a minute. Hold on, that's uh, 26 in my book. Okay. It's so important that you get those recordings because I give you so much more than you can get from sitting. Okay. Title page. I even said to Elamore, Elamore, you need a title page. Don't I got that. I got that. One done. of your classes. Without a title page, I got a that done. in the book. Here is your title page. Mm -hmm. I got that done, Doctor Butler. Okay, title page. Here is your. Here oh. is your. Um, here is the introduction. That's here, the one I have to work on right now. Here. Introduction. This is your introduction. We want you to have that introduction. Make sure that uh, you open with where it grabs the attention. You only need what about four paragraphs. One, two, that's about two pages for the introduction. It's already laid out for you. It says, okay, scholar, give me an introduction to your research paper. Okay, here's what I'm writing about. I'm going to define it. I'm going to tell you what faith is. I'm going to tell you what burnout is. I'm going to tell you why millennials are leaving the church. I'm going to tell you what elderly Black Americans are experiencing. I do that in my introduction. Just as you are preparing a sermon, your sermon most, most nearly has the introduction to say, this is what I'm going to talk to you about today. This is the scripture. And you give that introduction to your audience. You define it for them. The next thing you talk about, which is already laid out, is the statement of the problem. The, remember, it's already outlined for you. You just have to fill in the blank, so to speak. Statement of the problem. It's okay. What do I do here? What is the problem? Why are you writing about this thing? It says, 
the problem with, that I was writing about when I wrote this was domestic violence. So I gave the introduction to domestic violence in my proposal. When I write chapter two, I'm going to go really into the details. Yeah. I'm going to give you the background of domestic violence. I'm going to give you the his history of it, the secular history and the biblical history. Right now, all I want to do is hit on what I propose to do. So my statement of the problem is, well, I said currently there are too few attempts to examine the lives of spiritually minded Black women. These are women that are in the pulpit. I, I'm sorry, the batterer is in the pulpit or the batterer is in the pews and they come to church looking good. But when you go home, the woman is emotionally battered. She's physically abused. And I said, there's a problem here. There's a problem because these women, they have no one to go to. This was mm. my argument. They have mm -hmm. no one to go to other than the church mother. They can't go to the pastor because the pastor, you don't, you don't do good. Most nearly the pastor is a man and he might not understand. And then over so many years, we have been told as women, the sanctified woman sanctified the, that scripture. You know the one. So what do we do when we need help and we're being battered? Come to church every Sunday and we're being battered in our home and mostly abused. And so it says, I'm giving you, here's the problem. That's what I see is happening, okay? And so, uh, although the church is dedicated to helping abuse women, the church is dedicated to helping abuse women and their families. There is a sense of helplessness and frustration. My argument was the church is not doing all that it can do. That's the problem. Okay, moving on. I put the problem, I kind of explained what physical, sexual, psychological, spiritual, I tried to break it down. Purpose. The outline says, what's the purpose? The purpose of this research study is to what? Whatever you're writing about. Use these words. I told you over and over. Use these words. Some of these words, you don't have to change anything except what you are writing about. Mm -hmm. You can make it work. Use these words. Another purpose of this research study is to examine and investigate the incidence of church burnout. Yeah. You didn't have to change nothing but church burnout. Yeah. From a Christian perspective or from a ministerial perspective, give the purpose of the study, the purpose of the research. Okay? There's one of those transitional words. Further, you get tired of saying, this, that, and the other, you can say further or furthermore, another purpose, that's the transition word, okay? The transition word, they help you kind of sound intelligent. Research design, you can use these words right in here. You just make it work for your, what you're putting in. This research project design is both, use that, because the design is qualitative and it's historical in approach. So you don't have to rewrite that. Qualitative research is, you don't have to rewrite that. You don't have to write, rewrite. They endeavor, that's all there for you. Mm -hmm. Okay? All there for you. The historical research will investigate that. That's what historical research does. It's already there for you. Okay? Unless you're going to change up something. Because see where it says those women? You might not be talking about women. You might be talking about faith, spiritual, spiritual, spirituality and faith, which is Elder Sendeha, okay? Um, then your methodology. Dr. Joyce tried to uh, tell you about the methodology. All that means is what methods are you going to use in your research paper? Well, don't have to change it up too much right here. Doing this research project or doing this paper, the researcher, that's you, will gather. What are you going to do? I'm going to gather information. How are you going to do it? 
through computer searches? What else? Oh, I'm going to make observations, statistics. I'm going to have field notes, surveys, semi-structured interviews with ministers, pastors, elders. I'm going to talk to people about uh, how the church is treating the elderly. What programs do they have? Are they making sure that these elderly people can have Bible study? Are they visiting them in their homes? What is the church doing? These are the methods that I'm going to use to find out to do my research. I'm going to go to AARP. That's a method. That's one of the things that I'm going to do. I know that Lady Sharp has visited senior citizen sites. Mm -hmm. Visit senior mm -hmm. uh, citizens at the park. You know, they got these senior places. What are they yeah. talking about? What are they doing to help the uh, older people? Like yeah. myself. Do they have exercise there or whatever? You research it. You go to find out. What does your program offer? The seniors of this community. One thing I like about Lady Stark's paper is she found out in her research that everyone does not want to be called a senior citizen. Nope. Not everyone wants to be called elderly. She defined that. Mm -hmm. She found that out in research. Um, this The researcher will also conduct and distribute random surveys if, if that's what you're going to do. If this is what you're going to do, this is your method. Okay? And, and you right. can or if you want to, you don't have to put all of this because remember when I did this, I was working on a doctorate. That's why so much more to it. Yeah. Research questions. Elder Moore, when you see your paper, how that is outlined, you will see that all of those questions that you had in your paper, they are now under research questions. All they right. Have so I have to put them. Bam, 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 bam. He had about 19 research questions. He had yeah. about 19 research questions. We don't need that many. But what happens, we put them all down, then we go back and we figure out, are these relevant? Do we need all of this? Because if you, the research questions are the ones that say, here's what I'm going to do my research. I'm going to ask this. I'm going to go over here and do this. But if you're not going to do all of that, and you got 19 things to do, don't put all that down. Because right. put this research questions down. For instance, it says the research questions guide this study, because that's what they do, guide the study, are what are the ranges of abusive experiences encountered by female victims of domestic violence? If I put that down, that means I've got to go and find that out. If the answers, these are just questions. You're going to have to answer these questions over in chapter two. So I don't want to be answering 19 things. I'm going to narrow it down. And I think I narrowed it down to about seven. Okay. I research questions. These are the questions that I am trying to find out about things about domestic violence. And, and I shared with you that uh, I had to bring it in. I had to narrow it. My instructor was secular when I, when I first did this. And she said, what are you talking about, domestic violence? I said, well, you know, domestic violence. She said, well, child abuse, elderly abuse. I said, no, yeah. I mean, women, battered women. She said, then you need to say so. OK? I heard an elder say, we need some say so, Christians. <laughs> I've been redeemed. Anyway, I don't want to get off on that. But here's your research. When Elder Moore, when you get your paper, you'll see that. Uh, how that is, that is arranged, okay? And right. also with Elder Sanjeha, I also kind of uh, put him in there so that he can see his paper, see what he has to do. So you, you've got to have some research questions because this is what you're trying to find out. How have churches committed to creating an inclusive healing environment for victims and survivors of them. You're finding this out. When the churches are dealing with this issue, the churches know that people are, these ministers and these pastors are, are kind of leaving out of the pulpit. Have they noticed that the pulpit is empty? And men and 
women are just burnt out? They're not coming back? They have a calling? What has happened to the calling? Those are all research questions that you're going to find out in your research. This is what you propose to do. Interview questions. I put optional because everyone doesn't, doesn't interview people in their paper. But if you do, this is one way to pop it. Talk to people. Now, sister, what happened to you? Have you ever experienced domestic violence? Did you try going to your pastor or your first lady? What happened? Did you try getting help from the church? The church, at, at the time I wrote this, which is years ago, there was really nothing in place, programs and so forth. I know that West Angeles, Church of God in Christ, has programs. But my research found that out. They have programs for women that have been battered. They have programs for women that are coming out of prison. And men, they have such programs, okay, that were just being put in place at the time that I did mine. They were just barely, okay? They have programs for the elderly. You don't forget what they say. Don't leave a warrior, wounded warrior on the field. Don't leave a wounded warrior on the battlefield. Yep. Okay. And these these senior citizens, or as as Lady Stars can tell you, these old mothers and men and women of God, these elders and these retired pastors, they've been on the battlefield. And they've been through. We're not to forget them. We are to include them. They want to worship. They still want to worship. But you know, she also, in her paper, Lady Stark put something. There's a youth thing going on. There's a youth culture. She found all this out in her research. There's a, a youth culture and the youth, which, which maybe we did when we were young. You come in and you kind of put the old folks, or they feel some kind of way because all of a sudden, things are done so differently and they're not included. All right, we talked about interview questions. Those, these are the questions that are gonna, gonna help you go out and find out information. You're gonna find out. Why, aren't, why don't you leave if you're being abused? Why don't you leave? So when I started this, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm talking domestic violence and I know a lot of women. When I found out, a lot of women said, I can't leave. But you're being battered. You're being abused. You're being emotional. You're called bad names. I can't lose. I have children. I love my husband. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say, God hasn't told me to leave. Especially if you talk to a Christian woman. Yep. Okay? Because she's yep. praying. And I'm like, oh, I just know that, you know, when they read my paper, they're going to get up and leave. They're going to get out of this. And uh -uh. Women say a lot, the majority of the women. The statistics show will not leave her home. Especially if she has children. And especially if she loves her husband. And he loves her. Sometimes as I also found out that that because I didn't just talk to church women, I had to get the whole thing. Some houses homes had drugs and alcohol. That's what I found out in my research. Alcohol caused some of that stuff. Mm. And drug abuse, you know, it'd be a fine family. But yet the church cannot turn a blinded eye on the fact that we have elderly people that are just sitting and no one calls them anymore. They are forgotten. But God said, I've not forgotten their name. And all that was in the research, okay? Research objective. We said, we need some objective. What are your objectives? We only need what? Five or six? Don't give me a paragraph. Just give me a one-liner. What's your objective? Define and clarify the definitions of burnout. Yeah. Not just burnout, but ministry burnout. What's your objective? Define the stages of aging. Define the stages of aging. What's your objective? Identify biblical scriptures that the male batterer uses to justify. Sometimes the male batterer would say, 
Well, you know, you have to stay in the home because the uh, the, the man is the head. But he's the head only as Christ is the head. He's the head like Christ. And Christ would never. That's why the man, the man is to be a, a priest in the home. Yeah. So he's, he's to lead the women as Christ would lead. You know, you follow me as I follow Christ. But they can use scriptures, the scriptures that may be used out of context. Identify those scriptures. What else do you want to do? Increase the knowledge and awareness of tools and resources available in the community. I went to a domestic violence um, certification program for six months just to find out what they were doing, where the shelters were, what the police were doing, what happened to the children. It took six months before I could get a certificate from them, from a domestic well, some kind of certificate, okay? But you got to be serious about what you're doing. The other uh, uh, outline is significance of the study. What's the significance? Why is it important? This investigative study becomes significant because it will examine the elderly. Senior citizens that are there. I told you, you can use some of the wording. Use some of the wording in here. Use some of the wording. Okay, use some of the wording. The goal of the study is to da, 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 present most recent information to keep family program. Da, 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 da. Use some of the wording. Make it fit your what you're doing. The research study is needed and important to increase the faith community awareness of faith community uh, awareness of the fact that the elderly are, are, are forgotten in these homes. These homes, you know, when they got in there, oh, oh mother, I'm going to come and visit you. I'll, I'll come and see about you. I'm going to be praying for you. And then we forget them. That was, that's, that's what Lady, Lady Starks is writing about. Elder Tejahas is writing about faith, and he's just getting started. He's writing about faith and, and, and spirituality. Faith, we can say, is very broad. So we're going to bring it in a little bit. He's, he's got to work on it. When he gets the recording that nobody got, when you get the recording, you'll hear what I'm trying to recommend. That spirituality and faith. Spirituality and faith. And what somebody said, what does faith have to do with it? Because when, when, you have a, when you're sick, when you're mentally ill, when your family, faith have a lot to do with it. Your spirituality is your background, it's your surrounding, it's who you are. You know, it's, it's and then Ellison Zayhaus can tell you about that. I think he's really, really anxious to get that started. Um, then descriptive summary. This is optional also. Who is affected by the divine? Descriptive, giving a summary. A summary, descriptive. Who answers this question? And then you can be descriptive when I try to describe the battered woman, the victim or survivor. Again, this is optional, this one. I did it because it was part of the doctorate. Okay. Uh, what's the next one? Organization of the study. Somebody tell me about this one because I went over this before. What do I do in the organization of the study? We said what? Get your cards together. Get all your stuff uh, in order. What else? How do I write this? How do I write this? You make a trans. Make sure you, your transitions are good from one paragraph to the next from one as you go along. How do I write this, uh, uh, um, Dr. Joy? How do I write this, this, this organization of the study? Okay. Your organization of the study is like what it's showing there. It will present your introductory section of the paper. Oh. So what did you do in chapter one? What did you do in your proposal? You're pulling all of that information and you're putting it there in the organization of the study. You're telling what you're going to do 
there. The purpose of the study leads to research design, methodology, research questions, interview questions, research objectives, and the significance of the study. So you're pulling all of that information that you have put in that proposal into this organization of the study. And you're telling what this is, you're saying here, chapter one is gonna talk about my introduction. So you're gonna introduce your topic, your story. Chapter two, you're gonna go in, that's the literature review. That is the meat of your paper. That's where the bulk of your research will go in chapter two. Okay. So when I get ready to write organization of study, which you can do this tonight, you can write the organization of the study tonight. Why? Because it's already what? It's done already in chapter one. Ready, ready done. for uh -huh. you. Done yeah. yeah. Remember I said that? Mm -hmm. I, okay, say for instance, I'm doing a, a burnout. Chapter one will present the introductory section of the paper. Hey, I don't have to rewrite that. This qualitative research study will be categorized in five chapters, not six. Some of my students do six. That's optional. That's those A++ students. But you only need five chapters. The first chapter we're doing right now. We don't start chapter two until next quarter. But this is the, the organization of the whole paper. What else do I have to write? The qualitative, this qualitative research study will be categorized in five chapters. It sets forth the background. Don't put overview unless you're writing the doctorate. So just put background of the thesis. Don't put dissertation unless you're doing a dissertation. Project, which gives rationale. Do y'all get it? The statement of the problem addresses. Go home and write this tonight. Send it to me. Because guess what? All you have to do is what? Somebody tell me. All you have to do is what? Put down the same thing. Sit down and copy it. The organization of the study, this is it. Okay? It may be a few things that may be different in your paper. Chapter just, two. Just, this is what I just some of the some of the wording change according to what your topic is, right? Mm-hmm. <coughs> don't copy the things that pertain to the doctrine. Or don't copy the things that I have in here that are for example for your example. What does the literature have to say about that's only put in there for to help you understand? Okay. All right. Chapter four. Now you could already get this one written tonight. Don't do don't do six. Don't do six. So when you get to five, you can say, finally, chapter five will continue. You see that? Yeah. Did anyone hear what I said? You know what? I'm 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 really I, I'm I'm really uh, trying to say I'm I'm getting a little bit where I'm trying to say. Listen, all you have to do if y'all be listening, I can talk to you. This this one here, I ain't got to worry about the organizational study. I'm going to write that tonight because it's already written for me. Yeah. Unless you're going to change up some things. Because I have another outline of how to do the organization of the study. But this one is a good one for us. Okay? Outline of the study. So it's already written. All you have to do is go home and first thing you're going to do is write, put your element. There's your element. Organization of the study. Mm -hmm. And then come under it. Bam, 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 bam. Hey, I'm through with the organization of the study. Let me go back and work on my introduction. The students get hung up on the introduction, which they only need to do for a paragraph. And the only thing you're doing in, in that is making your sentences where they're not dragging and they're not uh, uh, fragmented. They are uh, complete. And you're saying what you're saying, introducing that subject. Do it like you're preparing a sermon. Okay, the other thing that you're going to put in this proposal is definition. Mm -hmm. Now, if you choose mm -hmm. not to do definitions in the proposal, you have to put them over in chapter one. Do them when you, I mean, chapter two. 
do them when you do chapter two. But if you're smart, you will be thinking of definitions when while you are doing your proposal. I'll go back to Lady Stark. She's got some definitions. One of her definitions is senior citizen. What was it, elderly? What is it, Lady Stark? Was it elderly? Elderly. Or it was something, yeah. She's got a lot of definitions that pertain to growing old. Everybody, she, she found out that's not identified. Well, what's elderly? Elderly is from this age to that age. Mm -hmm. It's just like Pastor uh, Candace is doing um, millennial. When she started her introduction, she had to say, I'm going to, more or less in her introduction, she's writing about millennials. But she's writing about why are millennials leaving the church? So I said, okay, you can talk about millennials, but what millennials are you talking about? Narrow it down. What church are they leaving? She said, the black church. And I'm like, you ought to say so. So the black church, what is millennials? And what else does she owe? Oh, do they want to be called African Americans or do they want to be called Black Americans? So you might make that a definition. Because we're at a point where we have to distinguish some want to be called African American, some will say, no, I'm Black American. Yep. How does it how is it going to be in your if someone, if you quote someone and they say African American, you quote it however they, they tell you. But when you're writing, you're making your mind that you're talking about black, the black church. But the black church is unique. Okay? It is unique. And it's the one that we are trying to help. Okay? So that might be a definition, black church. Did you know we need to define the black church? Ask, ask anybody that's taking church history right now. Mm. My church history students have to define Black history, Black church history. We have Black Black history, and we have Black church history. We have Black Christian history, and we have Black history. They have to define it. The other thing they have to know is what are the historically the historically Black churches. We got some old, old black churches. We got one in that just burnt down. Victory Baptist just burned down. That's one of our historic black churches in Los Angeles. I remember that as a little girl. And how old am I? That's a very historic. It turned out some very great leaders. And we've got the AME. That church up there on, off of North. And I want them to visit those churches and see those churches. That's research. So if you have to go out and find out into the community as Lady Starks is doing out there where the um, the seniors are, you do that. If you have to go to the churches and to the pastors to find out what's going on in burnout, if you have to talk to people about faith, the faith, the spirituality of it, do that. Put those definitions down. Don't just assume that everybody knows what you're writing about when those words that you use. Some of those words we use, people are like, what? We use those big high sound and pollute words. Okay? All right. Final thing you would do is write a little summary. I'll give you an example. My summary. That's my summary. You can read it for yourself. Okay? All right. Let me see if I can put one more thing up. And uh, I don't know, uh, Dr. Joyce is keeping us. We are at 7.13. Let me see. I tried to put up. Hold on a minute. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Nope, that's not it. Okay, hold on. Give me a minute, church. Hold on, church. God bless you, and thank you for your patience. Some of these I'm working on. Okay, now, I'm work, I, I'm kind of working on this one for Ellison Day Hot. Essentially, I said, Ellison Bayhouse, what are you going to write about? He said, faith. But faith is way out there. So I'm like, okay, who's faith? What kind of faith? Faith is what? 
we have to bring it in. So that he knows that he has to do that. So I, I suggest that we talk about spirituality and faith so that we know that we can find something out there. When we go out to do our research, man, there has to be something out there. If there's nothing on the subject or the topic, you ain't got no research. Yeah. You have to have something out there on whatever you're going to be writing about. Now, I'm looking at Elder, Elder Boyd. Elder Boyd wants to become a, a chaplain. That's good research. I don't know what else he might want to write on because it's going to do with his what he's been through. And he has a chance to tell the world that uh, you you can, there's all kinds of things. I don't know how we're going to put it yet. I don't know whether it's going to be a health research. I don't know whether it's going to be, um, I don't know. He's got to tell me what that topic is, okay? And, and keep in mind, I am going to meet with each one of you individually. Uh, but I, got, I can't meet with you until you got something to show me. Got something to tell me. My topic is this or my subject or my, I'm really concerned. I, I'm very passionate about blah, blah. This is what I want to write about. Then we can sit down and we can write about whatever. We can talk. We can now outline it. Yep. It's only got what many pages? 10 pages? We can puff it up, pump it up. That's why we put the definitions in it. It's the boom it. Bring it up. So definitions, you, you put enough definition in the paper, <coughs> you have your paper will you have more 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 words. Okay. I'm trying to design this for Ellison Day. One of the things I ask of you, help your brother or your sister. If you can make suggestions, make suggestions. So I I, I think it's gonna be like this. I don't know. He has to look at it. He's got spirituality. I, I, I put faith in here. I did a little something on faith. And all I did was try to get this rolling is just try to think about it. When Jesus' apostles asked, give us more faith, they recognize that great faith in God is needed when we, want, when we want to give up, when we are afraid. Wow. What do you think about that opening? Does that grab attention? Mm -hmm. Is that saying something? Mm -hmm. That's your introduction. And so then we can say, um, Jesus told them they already had enough. If you have faith as a small, it's almost like doing a sermon. Mm -hmm. You have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mulberry tree, be up, uprooted and plant in the sea. Mm -hmm. I went to the, my telephone and got those scriptures. I went to my telephone and my telephone said, you know, I didn't use every word. I put it in my own word. I paraphrased that. Oh, huh, wait a minute. Okay. What is scripture found? Okay. Jesus told them they already had enough. Quote, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, blah, 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 blah. You know it. And then I put down where I got it from. Luke, the NIV. And then I put, even faith as small as a mustard seed is enough to accomplish great things. This is the opening, this is the introduction. If the small amount of faith is placed in a great and mighty God, so how small are the seeds? You know, I asked myself that, wait a minute. How, what are you talking about a mustard seed? seed is small. How small are the seeds? Well, since I said that, in my next paragraph, I have to come up with something. Mm -hmm. In the Gospel of Matthew, preaching now, preaching, the parable is as follows. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which mm -hmm. a man took. These are not my words. These are words from scripture. Okay? Then I can say, the, the, which, which, which uh, the book, book here says, that Jesus is making a comparison. We know that the mustard seed is not the smallest seed, but Jesus is making a comparison. Jesus making a comparison said that. Remember, Dr. Joyce talked about those um, parenthetical phrases and tra transitions. Said, I might not want to keep saying, said that, said that, said mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I might want to say something else. Mm -hmm. I'll have to look and see one of those words. Okay? 
that I can use that make me sound like I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Jesus making a comparison said that the mustard seed was what? Quote, smaller than all other seeds. Put the quote around it. Who said it? Jesus. Mm -hmm. But that when it was full grown, it would be large enough for birds to nest. In the gospel of Mark, mm -hmm. I could have said St. Mark. Mm -hmm. I could have said St. Matthew. Mm -hmm. I could have just said in Matthew. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to pop it, make it really sound like, oh, in the gospel of. I could say Paul said, but mm -hmm. instead I could say the apostle Paul said. You see mm -hmm. how I'm making myself sound so much more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right? All right. So then I I found I told you what Matthew said. Now I'm trying to make this paragraph, I'm trying to make this paragraph. I'm gonna tell you what the gospel said. Mark said. Mark said it's like a grain of the da, 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 da. Then I went to my telephone to enduring word commentary. Now, since I'm going to use what they said, I put the date after where I found it. So today I found it. Today the fourth year. Enduring word Bible commentary. And I don't need that little, oh, wait a minute. I don't need that little, little, little there. Let me take that off. Enduring mm -hmm. word commentary. And then I'm going to quote what they said. Little faith can accomplish great things. But great faith can accomplish even greater things. Mm -hmm. What matters most, most is that our, that is what faith is in us. In what our faith is in. Our faith, the, the, the object of our faith. What is your faith in? Then Spurgeon. This enduring word quoted Spurgeon. Spurgeon has written Bibles. He's written commentaries. Mm -hmm. uh, he's one of our great theologians. Spurgeon is quoted as saying, I'm quoting Spurgeon. This is what Spurgeon said. Look how much it made my paragraph. Okay. In quote. All of that, I got Spurgeon to write that for me. I got him to say what I wanted to say. And I got how many paragraphs? One, One two, two, three, three, three paragraphs. Three. Mm -hmm. And in each paragraph, I'm trying to have at least four lines. So I always try to check them like up here. Now, I'm not sure I got, let's see. One, two, maybe three. I think I barely got four lines. Here I got about five lines. And when you get more than five lines, start a new paragraph, folks. Don't make the paragraph too long. When you start talking about something else, start a new paragraph. Okay? I might have could have started a new paragraph here. Y'all see what I'm saying? Because this is what Matthew said, blah, 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 blah. But I want to make sure that there's Four lines at least here. Four lines at least here. So I put them together because I couldn't quite get that. So they're all right together. Right, you see that? You can do the same thing with spirituality. Go to your phone and say, well, you know, spirituality uh, and faith, and then try to find out. So first thing you want to do with spirituality is define it. What is spirituality? Define it. Spirituality, kind of define it a little bit, kind of talk about what it is. Then by the time you get down here, the next thing that you're going to try and do, the next thing you would have here would be what? That you got to talk about? Statement of faith. Mm -hmm. you know, statement of the problem. Yeah. Oh, statement of the problem. One. You did the introduction. Okay, I got my introduction done. I, I kind of talked about what I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, and, and now I can tell it. I'm, 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 I'm preaching now. I'm going to tell you, I, I'm preaching about that uh, God has not forgotten your name. What did it say? Uh, First Corinthians or whatever it says, I'm not forgotten. I know your labor of work. I'm giving the scripture. You may forget. But I don't. But God said, I, I haven't forgot your name. Mm -mm. And then, then you quote over and says, Has God, has God forgotten? That's over in Psalm somewhere. 
You know how I know that? Because I looked up, I went to the Bible and said, look up forgotten in the Bible. Look up forgotten. Look up work. Where does it say that? Then I can go and get all of that. Okay? But the first thing I can hear Dr. Harden say, before we start writing, what's the first thing we do, sir? I'm going to tell you who, who's teaching this class tonight. You know who's teaching this class? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. <laughs> you go to God. I don't pray about everything. When I started this, I said, Lord, help me to help these students. Yeah. Help me some kind of way to help these students. I'm old now. This is what I'm saying to the Lord. The Lord said, say not that you're old. But I'll use you until I can use you no more. So I have to give you all I got because I'm being obedient. That's my gift. Holy Ghost. That's, mm -hmm. you. That's what I want you to know. You're not writing this alone. Holy Ghost, tell me what I should write on. How am I going to help someone who see this? Now we're going to stop right here because I really want to find out what Elder Boyd is writing about. But before we go there, is there any questions for Dr. George? And can I can I just say what you're telling what you're saying is in writing this, we tell them the first thing is to, is to mention what you're going to talk about, and then the second part is talk about what you're going to talk about. There you go. Third you part, it. And you third part it. is to tell is to tell them what you have told them. Basically. The conclusion. If you have All ever right. taken my public speaking class, mm -hmm. that is exactly it, Elder Moore. When you get up to bring a sermon, that's exactly it. When you're at a, an award banquet and you're asked to give the commemoration speech or the graduation speech, yeah, grab the audience attention. First thing you do. Because you only have so long to get them. Right. If you drag it out in the middle of your sermon, you're going to lose your audience. Right. Because this audience, they don't have time. You're going to hear some keys, keys dangling, children crying. <laughs> They're going to walk on you. Okay? Amen. You know, I, 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 I'm telling you this because I'm not a pulpit person. I, I'm, I'm a church mother. Mm -hmm. I'm a church mother. My job is to help the church, help the pastor, the first lady. Well, so that she, that came to me because I was told. I was, when I when I started preaching that that's what I was told, and that's why I mention it that way. Yeah. When you prepare your when you prepare your sermon, this yes. is what it's all about. So preparing yes. this paper, this is what it's all about. That's it. You got it. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> all right. If there's nothing else, any more questions, I have, I have, now, Lord knows I've given y'all this over and over and over again. But if that's what it takes, because after a while, you're going to be like Dr. Jerrica Rubin. I graduated with Dr. Jerrica Rubin. We're some of the first graduates at Long Beach Bible and okay. Institute. And, and Jerrica Rubin now has her own church. She's a pastor. Yeah. And she said, this is her thing. You'll get it after a while. Yeah. You ever hear her say that? Yeah. Get it after a while. So I'm going to say it over and over and over. You'll get it after a while. Mm -hmm. After a while. When I tell you that you don't have to rewrite everything, take that what's in the example and use some of the words. Because all you want to do at this point is get the proposal done. Yep. I think the hardest part of writing the proposal is the introduction. Once you get the introduction done, you can say, statement of the problem, significance of the study, here's the purpose, here's my objective, I'm going to throw a few definitions in there, give a summary, I'm done. See, the hardest part, if I can get everybody past writing that introduction, because I told you how many pages? 10, 10 to 15. 10 to 15 pages, double space, time Roman, 
Well, fine. If you read the book, you know that already. You got to read the book. Okay? Dr. Joyce pointed out a form to you tonight, a form in the book. That form is meant to help you. So when you're sitting on the computer and you see something you like, fill out that form. Because I can't yep. take it from me. You won't remember where you got that stuff from. Yep. Like, oh, this is good information. You write it all down, and then somehow it's gone like that. And you're like, oh, where did I get that from? Who was the author? What was the date? Put it on that form. Duplicate that form so you have a, a number of copies. Believe me, you, when I did my paper, it was a bit on floppy disk. Y'all know what a floppy disk is? Yes. Yes. Yeah, a floppy disk. That was when, if you lose that floppy disk or you get chewed up some kind of way, you were in trouble. And I didn't know how to use the computer then. I still don't know how to use it. A little bit more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A little bit more. As Dr. Harden said, I took Greek and it's still Greek to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking. I'm just talking. Okay. We're going to have, um, I, 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 I don't know if Elderson Dayhoff is still on the phone, but I will send a recording to him. I know he's uh, he was on the phone, but I'm going to send a, a recording to him. This is recorded. I'm going to send this to you. I hope y'all get it. Okay. All right. Hope so. Somebody let me know. Hey, I got it. Okay. All right. So we're going to, we're going to hear from, uh, uh, and then Dr. Joyce, keep us, uh, we can't tell everything y'all. So Dr. Joyce, you have to keep us timely. We're at 730. Does anybody have Dr. Joyce's number? Yes, I do. No. Who said no? Well, that was me. That was Yams. You have you have it, Yams. It's five six two. Okay. Five six two. Seven nine four. Seven nine four. Eight five. Eight five. Nine zero. Nine zero. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doctor. Mm -hmm. He's very good at research. I, I can tell you that. I, I told you that I needed a, a Library of Congress number for my book. Y'all know I, I, I've written several books, but I've only published one uh, on Amazon. And she was, she said, I'll do it. I'm like, Lord, I'm tearing my hair off for nothing. Let me call Dr. Yuri. Somebody that likes to go on the computer and search out stuff. So if you're looking for something and you can't find it, call Dr. Yuri. Now she works every day, so she's busy woman. But she'll let you know. She'll call you back. Let me call you. All right. Back. All right. So, God bless you. I love you all. I love amen. you. Love of the Lord. Elder Boyd. Yes, ma'am. What are you writing about? What is going your paper going to be about? Well, I would like for my paper to be about my journey. Um how the Lord has blessed me through my sickness from to where I am now. And I would like to uh, put that on paper and explain how I got to my uh, illness for not properly taking care of myself. Um, you know, just eating and doing whatever and as I got older, things just went away. And now I'm paying for those in this, those decisions. And I think people should know that you just can't sit and abuse yourself at an early age and expect everything to be fine later. And I mean, with the loss of my kidneys, with the loss of my leg, and, you know, it's just, it was just so many things. And I mean, not only one leg, but I got problems with both legs. But, you know, I got ulcers popping up all over my leg and everything. And it's, it is, you know, but out of all that, I'm still mobile. God has blessed me with a prosthetic leg. Um, I'm just... 
I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bedridden. I refuse to lay in the bed. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, my mind is coming back to me because for the last two years, I was in the hospital. And so just now getting out and I'm not completely out of this, what I consider hospital because I'm an assistant for living, assistant living uh, uh, condition. Facility. I mean, facility. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm still in the process of, of learning. And, and the crazy part about this, I got sick. I had to learn everything all over again. I mean, things that I grew up and I took for granted, I had to learn all over again, using the restroom, brushing my teeth, getting dressed. I mean, I had to have people teach me this in the last two years. So I, I really do feel as a chaplain, because I am to listen to the person that I'm there uh, talking to, hear them out and not to expand on all that I've been through, but just in case they want to hear my story, I can give them my story or I can encourage them of, on my story about what I've been through. And I've done that because when I was at uh, Beachwood, I used to just walk around in the hallway trying to learn how to walk again. And, and I would, you know, talk to people from, from the hallway to their door. And, you know, it was amazing how people wanted to express themselves. And I listened. And so now that's why I really do believe when I had graduated with my bachelor's, you know, I want to be a chaplain. I'm not, I don't want to be no preacher. I want to be a chaplain because I get to spend more one-on-one -on -one time. I don't have to worry about <clears throat> the church and all this other stuff. I have mm -hmm. a pastor. I can assist him in the building of the church, but I can, I can go into the hospital. I can go into the senior citizen home, the rest homes, and, and you know, spend a little time with someone and, and hear them out. But, um, but the, the, the thing in this, and I'm gonna let, let it go, Dr. Butler. I said I wanted to be a chaplain. And the more I've dug and researched and dig, you know, I come to find out that everybody that I speak with, it's not gonna be Pentecostal. Everybody I speak with is not going to be Church of God in Christ. So I have to educate myself to deal with Hindus, Buddhists, uh, atheists. I mean, just, just a little bit of everybody. So I have to really broaden my mind and pray that God would give me insight to deal with these other people. And so, you know, that's my goal. And it's turned out to be a lot. And what I asked for is starting to be a lot. But I am I really want this challenge. I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm just hope, praying that the Lord will bless me to be all that I can be in serving him in this, in this capacity. That's all I got. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm always, uh, when I hear um, uh, your testimony, I'm always encouraged. Uh, I, I, I think the more thing that I am, I, I, I'm look. I'm, oh, thank you, Jesus. This is what I say. Look at God. Look at God. What God can do. And look at the human spirit. Look at the human spirit. Amen. God has a Amen. purpose for each and every one of us. He said, my journey. Now, when we write this, it won't be mine. It'll be the journey to whatever. Mm -hmm. This is your journey to, and I haven't come up with that yet. We're going to brainstorm on that. Mm. 
It's your journey, but you're going to research it because in your journey, you can talk about helping people. You yes, ma'am. Talk about what it takes to become a chaplain, even. Mm -hmm. Talk about <laughs> how God. Uh, was, see, we don't. We don't. We don't have that certain presence. That's what happened to what's his name that uh, got swallowed by the fish. Jonah. Jonah. Jonah didn't want to go to them, them folks over there in Nineveh. But God said, you go where I want you to go. You may have to go to some Hindu folks. You may have to go to some white folks. You may have to go where the folks that, you know, I don't want to go to the prison. I just threw the last quarter. She was in, she's in the prison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, that's good for you. I can, yeah. I can deal with that, with what you're going through. But it's your journey. So be thinking about a topic for that. Yes, ma'am. Journey to go, to go to the internet uh, and, and do some things that says, put in the journey to blah, blah, blah. My journey to blah, wellness. My journey to whatever God is calling you to. I have a feeling God has called you to. This journey is taking you. God is taking you on this journey. Help, help me, Holy Ghost. Help yes, ma'am. God is taking you on this journey. On this journey, what is it, Lord, that Elder um, Boyd is to say? What is it that he is to research? Who is he to talk to on this journey? Because mm -hmm. I, I see now on this journey, he has to tell some folks, look, saints, it, it's all right to jump and shout. But you got to take care of your physical body. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So God is sending him to the saints to say, you can't, and talking to Mary, talking to this one, but I'm not talking to you. I'm like, oh, me, I, I feel it on me. You can't eat all night, late, late, slack at night. That's going to come back on you some kind of way. High yes, ma'am. Cancer. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. God let God, God deliver me from that. He yeah. Said, and and God said this: be obedient to your diet. Mm -hmm. Take a half. Yeah. For a while there, I tried to do right, you know, but it's on me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Why go to the doctor? I go do what the doctor tell you. But my the journey is taking. The journey is going to say to the saints, you need to take care of you, yourself. Not only your spiritual life, but your physical life, your mental being, da 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 da. And there's something in here where you can talk about medical. Talk about the medical. I have one student write about her journey to um, uh, breast, breast surgery. Uh, she did, that, did her paper on that. For her masters. Um, so she talks about from the time she walked in, she can tell you who the specialists were, different specialists she deal with. You've been in a, 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 a hospital, you've been through some surgery, you've been through some things. What were those things? What were those illnesses? What were those diseases? Can you write about them? Amen. What do we need to do to take care of ourselves so that we don't have diabetes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, not your word, but you're going to go do the research. Mm -hmm. Doctor um, uh, Nadine Stark stated that in order to be obedient to your diet, you need to, uh, as for diabetic, the diabetic, list of things one, two, three, four, five. five. You got to stick to your diet. Stick mm -hmm. to your diet. Mm -hmm. You got to stick with it. And you know that because you said, I thought I could, I, I didn't think it would all come back on me, but it did. Amen. It also has to do with obedience. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going you're gonna to go, Elder Board, you're going to brainstorm it. Yes, ma'am. What, what you have to do, you come up with a topic, and, and, and next time we meet, I want to hear that you have brainstormed that topic, that subject. Get with Dr. Joyce. She's good on that. She can tell you the subject, whatever. She's heard your story tonight, so she can tell you 
Dr. Miller is good, but he's he's not well. Dr. Lagans is good. Those ones, for some reason, God uses them to come up with those good subjects and topics. And yes, ma'am. Arguments, because you're gonna need a good argument for why you're writing this paper. What's your purpose? You've seen me go over that. So we're gonna need an introduction, the problem. We're gonna need the purpose while you're writing this, while you're going through this, while you're taking the time, because you want to be a chaplain. My purpose is to be a chaplain, and I want to be able to reach people, and I want to be able, to, you know, we're gonna take off the eye. We don't. We're not gonna use the personal eye. In the proposal, we can kind of use it a little bit. We can use it, but we're gonna take off that eye. So we're writing a book now. When you write a book, you don't put in, I did this. I went to the store. I went to the market. That's kindergarten. That's why Dr. George gave you those transitional phrases. So you can say, this researcher, this examiner, this scholar found that Dr. So-and-so over here da -da -da -da, is, is working on something da -da -da -da. or you found this where somebody has written a book to the saints. There might be some books out there already written. Get those books and quote mm -hmm. those people. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. All right. I've been threatening yeah. to write that book myself. Mm -hmm. To tell the saints, be obedient to your God. Be obedient to what God is telling you. Mm -hmm. Don't go right back into drinking and God get you off alcohol. You're going to go right back out there in it. What, what's this said? A dog, Elmore? The dog went back into the vomit? Mm -hmm. Well, the dog, the dog, go, go clean him up and go right back into the vomit. Mm -hmm. Y'all get what I'm saying? So that's your, that's your topic, but you got to start writing something on it. And for, yes, you, for you, Ella Boy, record it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Record, record, record so that you can have it. And I recommend that for all y'all. Mm -hmm. That's how I got through Greek. I recorded the, uh, 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 Dr. Noble. And I had to record myself speaking Greek or saying, writing, you know, Greek. Record it so you can hear it and where you won't forget it. Ask God because the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to write it for you. You got to do some work now. But it's yes, the Holy Spirit, the one that teaches this class. I don't, I don't pretend, I don't pretend to teach it. Because I know my limitations. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So thank God, Dr. Uh, 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 God sent me Dr. Joy. That just to take a little press off of me because I do have other classes. And sometimes I have other classes at other places. Mm -hmm. And those folks, I have sometimes as many as Dr. Joyce will tell you, we have as many as 10 and 15 people in a class. So, and those people, of course, you know, it, they're, they're not getting degrees or anything like that, but they're still hungry for uh, just getting a certificate. You know what I mean? Amen. You want to learn. Amen. Amen. I've helped you long enough on this evening. Um, one one quick thing I'd like to add for um, <laughs> I keep wanting to call him yams. That's a, a joke between <laughs> we, we like this we like the same uh, Bugs Bunny Daffy Duck cartoon. <laughs> a Thanksgiving uh, cartoon called uh, Tom Turkey, and it's yes, so, ma'am. We, we found out that we both like that, so I've been nick I nicknamed him yams. Mm. Um, what I, I was listening to you, I think it's a, it's an awesome, uh, it will be an awesome book. Um, I came up with the journey to chaplaincy. And a, a real important topic, I think, for you, the blessing is in the obedience. Because if you stick to what it is you need to stick to, th there comes the blessing. Because when God tells us, like Jonah, when God tells us to do something, the blessing is in the obedience. So we, we do what he tells us to do, and we're blessed by it. So just a little food for thought. I was just j jotting down some things while you were talking, because I did my story. I call it Marie's story when I did my 
thesis, first thesis on forgiveness. That's my thing. That's my my passion. Uh, it's a gift. The gift of forgiveness, the power of forgiveness. Um, a couple of you have heard me speak on forgiveness, but in telling your story, yeah, you have there's there's a lot you can do in there. You can come from the medical aspect of it. You can come from the, the spiritual aspect of it. You can put in there how faith came, brought you through this, trusting in the Lord brought you through this to where you are now and, and the things you have overcome, the things you know that you did not do that you should have done, so forth. So all that can be brought out and that can help someone along the way. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Okay. 7.49 p.m. Okay, so Saints, you've been very patient tonight. I, I've kind of got going on my soapbox. But will you pray for your school? Pray for your school. This is a wonderful school, but it cannot make it without your prayers and your financial support. So whatever you do, think about this school. Uh, so that it will uh, continue to thrive and uh, turn out the leadership that it has done. A great scholar. All righty. So tonight, um, oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Elder Moore, pray us yes. up. God, we come before you once again. We want to thank you. For this session on tonight, and God, we ask you to continue to look on us, continue to open up our minds, God, that we might understand, God, what our instructors are saying to us and trying to get us to do. And God, we ask you to lead us and guide us in the pathway that we can accomplish the goals in the name of Jesus. We, have, we pray and ask that you would look on every instructor at Long Beach Bible College. God, look on them. You know their classes. You know what they're teaching. And every student in those classes, we ask you, oh God, to look on them and bless them, oh God. And each one of us that are students at the college, God, we are asking that you will give us that mind to be a go out and win souls, and not only win souls, but tell them about the college. You have that might be wonderful. look on the complete faculty. <laughs> that's there at the college. Look on every one of them in the name of Jesus. We ask that you would lift and encourage and we give you praise, we give you glory. And as we leave this session on tonight, oh God, we ask that you would protect us from the hand of the enemy. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank God. Amen. 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 Uh, Lady Scott, thank you so much. You're such an inspiration to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Give my love to Pastor Sark. Yes, ma'am. All righty. Love you. Good, Good night, Good everybody. Good night. All right. All right. It's been a long time. And I know when you left, but it's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elmore, for that. Bye.